and welcome to Grandad Reviews. In this video, I'm going to try and answer a common question that keeps coming up on Fuji Facebook groups. And that is, someone will ask, and quite rightly, what lens do people recommend for wildlife or sport as in regards a long telephoto zoom now as anyone who actually does wildlife photography or sports photography especially like bird photography or anything like that you always know that how long lens you've got you always need a longer lens uh, colleagues of mine who shoot canon with uh, 500 and 600 mil lenses are always saying all well, I've had to put the two times converter on and it's still not close enough so the answer there is no zoom or telephoto is ever long enough in a given situation now with Fuji we're a little bit limited uh, the longest lens you're going to get is the 100 to 400 I don't actually own that lens but I have used it and it is an excellent lens it's brilliant uh, you can add a 1.4 or two times converter and make it a bit longer but it's not a terribly fast lens it's 5.6 at 400 mil so once you start adding converters um, you're losing a lot of light down from that as a prime you've got the 200 mil f2 wonderful lens don't own that <laughs> don't think i'll ever will uh, but i have used it and yeah fantastic lens different league altogether uh, down going down from there the next longest zoom you're going to get is this one a 50 to 230 but it's an xc so it's a cheaper lens it's a cheaper build and it's not the fastest so we're looking at 4.5 to 6.7 so quite slow at the long end and it's very very light it's a great walk around lens but it does go from 50 to 230 and it does work quite well it is pretty sharp it's not the fastest auto focusing but it is reasonably snappy but just recently Fuji launched this one and this is the 70 to 300 XF lens now unlike the XC this is weather sealed so you can, it'll be great if you're going out in wet weather or by the sea or anything like that it's faster we're now looking at an f4 to 5.6 so at the long end at 5.6 it's same as the 8 100 to 400 it's got a limiter switch on here as well as using the limiter in the xt3 xt4 and xs10 got a lock to stop it creeping if you got it round on aiming down it's well made reasonably fast on the autofocus but a bit dearer than the XC lens. Now there is there are there is also the 55 to 200. Uh, don't own that. Never used it, but I assume it's similar quality to the 70 to 300 is as in regards image quality and uh, AS speed. We've also got the 18 to 135. Now 135 is not a huge range to go on but it is an extremely well built lens you're looking at 3.5 to 5.6 it's weather sealed again autofocus is pretty quick we've got the aperture ring like the 70 to 300 and reasonably priced so those three lenses are in a in a budget or reasonably priced area we have got the 50 to 140 f 2.8 again another I say expensive expensive compared to those three but not expensive in the world of 2.8 lenses so what I thought I'd do is we'll put those three lenses I've showed you up against each other not for so much image quality or AF speed or anything like that but if you've got the 18 to 135 so you've got it as a kit with the, your camera do you need to go 
up to say the 55 to 200 or the 50 to 230 or the 70 to 300 and then again if you've got the 50 to 230 and that's the kind of budget you're on how much are you gaining going to the 70 to 300 so what I'm going to do we'll go outside we'll do a few quick tests and then we'll come back and uh, talk about the results so let's go outside right so this is the setup we've got gonna target here our subject as such camera we've got the X-T3 uh, we've got the 70 to 300 on for start what we're going to do is zoom in at 300 mil the actual eagle wooden eagle will fill the frame top to bottom as near as we'll leave it at that we'll then take one shot at wide open one at f8 then we'll zoom back down to each setting on the lens do the same swap over to the 50 to 230 without moving the tripod do the same then swap over to the 18 to 135 and do the same let's uh, get started so we're at 300 mil and we are going to be wide open 5.6 so this is the first shot so then we'll change it to f8 so we're at f8 base iso 160 So now we'll uh, change lens, we'll put the uh, 50 to 230. So now we're on the 50 to 230. We'll do exactly the same. You'll see how much difference the 230 to 300 is on the actual subject. And we'll go through the uh, zoom ranges. So we're wide open, 230 mil. And we'll just order focus in so we'll see how accurate that is. So that's the 50 to 230. Let's try the 18 to 135. Now we've got the 18 to 135 on. We'll do exactly the same. Zoom to 135, zoom all the way back. We'll take two shots at each thing. Uh, wide open and F8. Let's carry on. As I say, we've not moved the tripod at all. So it's just changing lenses.
So we've looked at all the footage on the computer and what's the conclusion? Well, as you can see, the difference in framing between the 70 to 300 and the 50 to 230 at the longest end isn't a huge amount. So we've got the 50 to 230. Let's move the camera as close as we need to get. Now this is the same framing as the 70 to 300. And the 300 is here, and we're now here at 230. So this is how far I've had to move in from the 300 mil to get the same framing. You basically can take one like large stride from the 300 to where the 230 was, and you've got the same framing. So I know that's not always going to be possible. You can't get any closer to your subject, but you can also crop that 230 image. You're not cropping a huge amount. As again, we can see on the on the video, and the quality you're losing, you can gain with a bit of sharpening and uh, a bit of post processing. Obviously, there's going to be a bigger difference if you add the hundred to four hundred, but the difference there is a it's of a greater value, so you're going to have to budget for a higher amount about twice that of the 70 to 300 and a lot more than the 50 to 230. Also the weight, you've got a heavier lens there, a larger lens, and so it's not as easy to carry around. And you'll probably find you want a lighter zoom or long telephoto at some point if you just want to go for a quick trip. So there's no real right or wrong if you've got the 18 to 135 and you want to get a longer lens, you've then got to decide, have I got the budget for the 100 to 400? Do I want to carry that weight as well? If not, then I would go for the 70 to 300. I certainly wouldn't go for the 55 to 200, even though the quality would be the same, but the price difference isn't so big. So I'd rather save that extra for that 70 to 300 and get that extra um, usability out of it. But if you th feel I'm only occasionally going to use a longer telephoto, I want a light lens, I'm not bothered, bothered about weather sealing or anything like that, and I've got a very limited budget, then I think the 50 to 230 is a really good option. And when I go away on a short break or something and I only want to take a really light package, I'll take the XS10 the 15 to 45 XC and the 50 to 230 XC. That's such a light package, you hardly know you're carrying it. If you've already got the 50 to 230 and you feel you want something a bit longer, then it's a harder question to answer. If you really, really want weather sealing and you've got a small budget, then the 70 to 300 is a very good option but you're not gaining a huge amount in your zoom range. So I would have said, if you really want a longer lens, save up and get the 100 to 400, because then that will give you the bigger difference. But as we can see in the video, it's all a personal choice, and the, you can use all of these lenses to their full ability and get similar results by cropping, by just moving, and at the end of the day, it's going to be down to whether you want weather sealing, what your budget is, and how much weight you want to carry around. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. 
want to see more, any more videos like this hit that subscribe button and please hit the like button to help the channel expand and get sent out to more people till next time see you later